Hello internet friends. Today is just a quick, quick video um, showing you how to easily take supports off of 3D printed resin minis. minis. Um, here are a bunch of miniatures that I printed on these machines here, the Lego Mars 2, the Sonic Mighty 4K and the Mighty 8K. Um, they're just a bunch of miniatures from um, a couple of uh, this really cool Dragonborn uh, campaign that I supported and this really cool um, City Folk campaign that I supported. Uh, some of the, the Dragonborns came pre-supported. The City Folks, I used Litchi Slicer, Slicer, just default medium uh, supports on there. Nothing fancy. And here's how to take them off. These things have been um, uh, cleaned in three different buckets using my three bucket of IPA me method. Dirty IPA, slightly cleaner IPA, and clean IPA. Like one to two minutes uh, agitating in a, in a pickle jar, one to two minutes in a pickle jar, and one to two minutes one to two minutes in a pickle jar and then dry it overnight. Uh, there's a video on my channel that you can check out that shows how to do that. But now we're just gonna very easily take these supports off. Back in the old days, I used to go in here and take them off when they were cold or try and nip them off or make supports way too thick. Um, and back before the Litchi Slicer and Chitu Box, Chitu Box had better um, automatic supports. It was kind of a nightmare, now it's great. This is just um, tap water from the sink, as hot as my sink will make it, probably between 105 and 110 degrees, not too hot. Basically, you want your water jacuzzi temperature. Anything hotter than that is it could have a tendency to warp your fingers, especially minis and the weapons and swords. So you want it hot, but like hot enough where you put your hand, warm hot, like where you can put your hands in and it might sting a little bit, but not burning, boiling hot. You don't have to boil these things. And it's really easy. You just drop your minis in and let them sit for about 15 to 20 seconds. And they will, um, it'll, it'll cure this, it'll, it'll not cure, it'll weaken, the, it'll heat up the sports enough where you can just peel these off like, like peeling shrimp, like I've said before. Also, this is, I get all my stuff, um, my plastic, my plastic Tupperware and stuff from the dollar store because it's like, you know, five to 20 times cheaper than getting it at Target or Walmart or, or, or you know, especially at a department store or even, even on Amazon. Um, and that way, if it gets wrecked or ruined someday, you can always throw it away and get new stuff. Uh, but you want to use a pretty big vat of water because, like I said in a previous video, water, when it, the heat of water, like hot water, is basically um, how hot it is is how fast the molecules are moving around inside of it, bumping it together in, 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 because of friction. Uh, with a bigger vat, it holds more water that's hot because every time you put a mini in here, it's going to absorb that, that 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 heat or the momentum of those of those molecules, and it's going to slow them down, and the water is going to cure. So after or not cure, the, the water is going to cool down and get colder, so it will get less effective. So if you're doing a big batch of minis. Um, I would recommend getting a big, big thing of water um, and, and, and getting some hot. Don't make it hotter. Though. Don't go, go, oh, use boiling because that's more energy. There's there's diminishing returns on making your water too hot. Again, uh, look, look at that. These just peeled right off. Like I said, like peeling shrimp. Um, the best analogy you can think of. And now my guys can, I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna put these guys here to dry overnight. I'm gonna put all my supports in this bucket over here because at the end, I should put this guy to dry in here. At the end, I'm gonna cure these with a super bright UV flashlight that I got on um, Amazon for like 12 bucks. Put a link in the description. Um, it's it's great. It, it, it's, it's great for cleanup for around um, 3D printing in general and other household uses. Um, give yourself a suntan. Yeah, careful, you can't burn yourself if you shine it on yourself for an hour, so don't do that. Again, these come right off. Loving it, put that in there to dry. Now we'll get fancy, we'll drop a bunch in. Because like I said, they only need like 20 seconds. You don't want to leave them too, in too much, but I know they're going to cure, they're going to, I'm not cure, but they're going to heat up so quick that I will be able to just take these off. Boom, boom, boom. Doo -doo -doo. Look at this, they just peel. I'm just, I'm just, all I'm doing is just rolling the guys um, right out of, right out of the supports. I'm not doing, pulling too hard. Oh, this one, yeah, this has got kind of jank supports on it, but this wasn't the best support job. <laughs> Uh, because it's, it's a, um, there we go. It's a render. Uh, it's a gray render. Miguel Zavala, the famous D&D guy who's printed every character in Monster in all of the D&D books and releases them for free online. He uh, printed this uh, gray render, which is like a big monster that's kind of like uh, follows you around. But they're actually born of like an egg that, or thing that pops off of them. Kind of like, like a gremlin when they multiply. So I wanted to have one that was a baby one. So you could have kind of like a baby one that would grow through your campaigns. Like a level, you know, CR one quarter. Because I forget what kind, of, what kind of CR they are later on in the game. But they're pretty powerful and pretty strong. So I thought that would be funny. So that's what I made. And these are some Dragonborns. I'll put the links to the, um, the SD files to the two campaigns that, that some of these are from. And to even that one that um, Miguel's gray render that he just released from the um, Morden Canons, I believe. Um, Madness, is it? I think it's Multiverse and Madness or whatever it's called. I think it's from that recent book. But yeah, the gray render is a real favorite son, um, favorite uh, character, creature, me and my son. So we like to use one. We wanted a baby one because my son always wants 
a high-powered, you know, sidekick, animal, beast, pet, whatever, and I never give him one. I always make them baby versions of whatever he wants, you know, like a baby red dragon that's, you know, can't make fire or something like that, you know, like his, I don't want him to have the most overpowered stuff in the world, which he does not enjoy, but it does make D&D more fair if you, you know, play from earlier levels and then level up versus, you know, starting at level 10 like he wants to with every magic spell and weapon in the world. But yeah, like again, just peeling these right off. I uh, showed this in a previous video. This is a Dragonborn Artificer like gunfighter. So cool. Um, so cool. Oh, this guy's funny. Uh, this is, yeah, this is from the City Folk uh, campaign. This is a Minotaur bartender. So that was cute. Uh, this guy didn't even have supports. He's just a Dragonborn kid with a um, owlbear. I featured these guys in a previous video, but I thought they were great, so I wanted to print more. Here's my render. This guy's a good example. He, um, the render is the gray render here is a larger figure. It's like it's like a pretty big miniature. How the how the original uh, original figure uh, model was, but because I shrunk him down, this base is very thin. Look, this base is actually bendable. So any water hotter hotter than that would actually uh, would actually warp this base. So that's why you don't want the water too hot, especially for the little guys, because it can mess them up and give you warped minis. Nobody wants warped minis. Um, I mean, no, it's not the end of the world, but you know, if you're gonna take the time to print them, you want them to come out nice. Look at that, yes, nice and warm. But see, look at this, his base is bending a little bit. Uh, I'm just gonna be careful not to bend it too much as I'm taking him off of this thing. I'm gonna be careful not to pull off fingers and limbs too. It's another big thing. If you get stuck also, uh, just because I'm pulling this off, you can use nippers if you want to nip these things off if you're really, if you're anal or you want your, you want your miniatures to be perfect or it's you know some job you're doing for somewhere else. That has to be, you know, a friend or a roommate or a client or boyfriend or girlfriend that has to be perfect. And some people really do care about their minis being perfect. Um, I try to, I'm very, you know, I worry about this stuff and get anxiety, but also I just want to get my stuff tabletop ready because I'm printing all this stuff uh, basically to play with uh, or give away. I give, we have a D and D group that we started here at, recently after the pandemic it's called SoCal D and D and a 3D printing SoCal group that we start. So at our meeting, our monthly meetings here. Uh, in Southern California, I'll print up a bunch of stuff for the for the D and D stuff, and I'll usually pick one one um, figure, and I'll I'll print them and prime them and give them out at the meetings. And the same thing here, 3D printing to kind of welcome the other 3D printers. I will print out a batch of some cool figure, um, usually D and D or fantasy related. It doesn't have to be. Sometimes it's Star Wars, but um, just to kind of like give them a cool little prize or toy, you know, gift for coming for taking the time to being part of our group and coming to our meetings. Perfect. Um, I don't know. I just, I just, I like personally. I, I like doing stuff like that. I think it's, I think it's neat. And I like, I, I think the best part about 3D printing is you can print stuff and then you can give it to other people. You know, like, hey, here's this cool thing I made. Do, 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 would you, would you like a baby gray render? And maybe they were never going to print that. Take the time to print that file, or they don't have that file, or they didn't buy that. Um, you know, support that Kickstarter or whatever you did online. And I don't really believe in giving, you know, trading pirated files because I think that undermines the creators that make these great models, but I do believe in printing them out and giving them as gifts if you can. Um, Cause why not? Who doesn't like gifts? And who doesn't like getting free stuff? And you know, 3D printing is fun, but 3D printing is also kind of a huge pain in the butt, <laughs> to be honest, and it's messy. And not everybody has the, the room, you know, at their house or the, or the patient, uh, you know, <laughs> family members to have, have 3D printing at their house or, you know, either resin or, or um, resin for the smell and mess and, uh, what do you call it, FDM for the noise. So it's nice sometimes like people, there's people that like 3D printing that don't actually 3D print or are interested in it or would like to. So since I am a big spoiled brat that has these big three really beautiful machines right here, when I'm not printing for myself, and I do it, I print so much, I'll never paint all these guys in the you know 10, 20 lifetimes to be honest. Um, I love printing cool models that I find that, that turn out really good and always, you know, printing a couple and then I get to keep one and then I give them away and that's, Part of the beauty of uh, 3D printing, like I, I, um, I don't teach school, but I taught school for a couple years. And I got out of college, amongst other things. And I think if I was a full-time school teacher, I would be a hardcore 3D printer because I would print out new figures every week. Um, mine would probably be D&D, but they could be space or you know other other fantasy figures. And I would give them out each week as prizes. And at the end of a school year, if you got if you, if you made the challenge of getting good grades, and behavior every week. At the end of the school year, I would kind of plan it out where it would be a set over how many weeks of school there were. And at the end, you'd have a complete set of like you know 36 or whatever guys uh, or characters or whatever. I don't know. That's just cool stuff. And I, I want to do that with the 3D with the printing groups and the D&D. I haven't told them that yet because we just started meeting. You know, we just started having meetings because COVID. You know, it's, it's hopefully you know still going around, but the pandemic is wrapped up. Knock on wood or. Masonite, um, 
yeah, so I, I, I don't know. I, I think that giving people little Easter eggs and these things, you know, it's expensive to do all this, like to buy the printers and the resins and all this. But once you're up and running and you're printing out huge batches, the, the, these are these things cost pennies to make, but they're so cool. So I don't know. I, I like giving people gifts and I like um, sharing the hobby with people, even people that would never in a million years be into D&D or 3D printing. Uh, or both or either I think it's fun um, you know everybody does that that being said when I give away resin minis I always um, you know obviously I, I cure them but I also always prime them because I don't want to dump a bunch of unprimed minis on people because uh, I think that's kind of you know they can be a little toxic and you know even when they're cured I don't know I wouldn't I wouldn't put one of these in my mouth uh, per se even if it was cured although you could be a chemist and make that's totally safe I don't know it's resin really like a dragonborn archer but yeah, that's it. That's how you do it. It's super simple. I'm just doing this whole batch so you can see how quickly you can process a bunch of them. And you can notice that I'm, I'm, I'm being more careful than I look. I'm running my thumb across them and making sure they came out. You know, I'm getting all the things off and not pulling hands. But I've done this a million times. And I know the supports on these work because I made these models, models earlier this week. But if they're, if your models, if you did bad, if you did bad supports or litchi slides or should do box do bad supports, be a little bit more careful taking them off, obviously. But these look like they're, they're all good to go. Um, no fails in these, no torn off guns or arms, which is my favorite. And then that's just that. And again, at the end, I'm gonna take all these. I'm gonna take this UV flashlight. Um, hold on, let's get it. These guys are gonna sit in here, I'll jumble them up. I might put them in under the container so they're all spread out and then cover them, you know, with the, with the lid askew so they're not direct sunlight or put them under, let them dry 24 hours and then cure them and then in, the, in a curing station of your choice could be the sun and then they're good to go i'm going to zap these with this uv flashlight i'm going to jump shake these around and do this for about a minute off camera um i just when i'm done i'm going to zap my whole workstation and zap this water and then i'll be on to the next one uh if you like this video please like and subscribe uh and share it with your friends if you have anything that you want to know how to do with 3d printing especially with, uh, resin and printing miniatures leave a comment in the questions below uh, or leave a question Leave a question in the comments below and I'll and I'll try and I'll try and do my best to either address it as a, as, a, as a reply or if it's a big enough issue that I could cover or I, I can make a video of it, I'll try and make a video. Alright guys, thank you very much.